Tales of Arise is the latest in the Tales of franchise, a series that aside from a couple of cult classics, has for me rested squarely in the B tier of JRPGs. I chalk this up mainly to join the series late during the PS3 and PS4 eras, where the games were running on an aging engine with cheap looking levels and art design that didn't catch your attention unless the characters were dressed like this. Are you kidding me? What are you wearing? Tales of Arise is here to change that with a new engine, an innovative art style, and a story that deals with themes not often seen in JRPGs. The question is, does it succeed in making the Tales of franchise worthy of being mentioned alongside JRPG juggernauts like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest? Almost. Not quite, at least in my opinion, but it's still pretty darn good and is likely the best JRPG of last year. Find out why in this review. <laughs> Arise is set in a galaxy where there is an interstellar conflict between two planets, Donna and Rena. Calling it a conflict is a bit of an overstatement though since by the start of the game, things have been pretty one-sided for centuries, with the Renans enslaving the Donnans and completely wiping out their culture and history. You play as a Donnan slave named Alfin, who in the most tried and true of JRPG tropes, cannot remember anything past his name. Oh, come on. Before you roll your eyes, Alfin has a couple of unique characteristics that set him apart. First off, he wears a mask that he cannot remove and makes him look like he's auditioning for Daft Punk. Secondly, he literally cannot feel pain, a trait that gets woven into the story and gameplay in interesting ways. More on that later. Calling Alfin the main character will be selling the game's story short, as it's really about both Alfin and a mysterious Renan woman named Shion. Shion is cursed with thorns that prevent anyone from touching her and is out to kill the Renan overlords for unknown reasons. Circumstances force Alfin and Shion to work together as they both go on a journey to kill the Renan overlords. Alfin to free his people and Shion to fulfill a hidden agenda. And this is what I really appreciate about Tales of Arise. It deals with subject matter not often seen in JRPGs in a mature way without needing to be edgy or resolving serious matters with a boilerplate anime message. Power of friendship is so amazing! Don't get me wrong, this isn't some in-depth masterclass on how racism can infect a society or a thesis on reparations, and frankly I wouldn't want that in my entertainment. But I do have to give the game kudos for the fact that it manages to broach somewhat heavy subject matters such as racism and slavery while maintaining a pleasant tone. And a lot of that great tone is owed to some solid character work between your party members, who aside from looking like they all belong in an anime version of Abercrombie and Fitch, all have pretty solid arcs that develop across your playthrough. The way these characters develop in their relationships with one another is hand down the best part of the story. You'll see characters gradually shift from their preconceptions to trying to understand each other's viewpoints. This is especially true of interactions between the Donnans and the Renans in your party as obviously there is prejudice between them. But what really makes these characters endearing are the slice of life skits that take place outside the main story. These skits are a staple of the Tales of franchise and Arise fleshes out the characters' personalities rather than their ideologies. The only downside is that these skits can be quite long and slow down the pace of gameplay, but luckily none are mandatory and are able to be watched later at campsites. I do recommend watching a majority of them though, as some of the game's funniest and most heartwarming moments are told through these skits. Unlike traditional JRPGs, the Tales of franchise is known for fast-paced combat that almost bleeds into action game territory. That tradition remains strong in Tales of Arise with a robust combat system that features characters with enough depth and mechanics to belong in a Guilty Gear game. Take Alfin for instance. Remember how I said the game makes use of his inability to feel pain? Well, fairly early in the game he gets a weapon known as a Blazing Sword, which per its name burns anyone who wields it. Since Alfin doesn't feel pain, he's able to use the sword in combat, but at the cost to his health. Each character features a unique mechanic like this, whether it be building damage by not taking hits, blocking enemy attacks with a shield, or attacking with bombs. This means that trying a new character in Arise essentially feels like picking a new fighter in Tekken. You'll want to spend some time learning their new moveset before taking on tougher enemies, otherwise you're liable to get destroyed. <laughs> And speaking of enemies, if there is one thing the game doesn't lack, it's enemy variety. Each region you'll visit plays host to a number of flora and fauna that are all intent on wiping out your party. There are even special enemies that you can find in the world that net you special items and upgrades, but are largely meant to be challenged during the late game. I only have two major issues with the combat system. First, and I find this to be a problem with a lot of anime style games, is that there is simply too much happening on screen at once to really know what's going on sometimes. This becomes more pronounced when your party is taking on a single enemy and whatever you're attacking gets lost in a sea of special attacks and magic spells. I mean, I defy you to tell me what is happening in this clip. I don't understand. 
And this wouldn't be so bad if you could give even the most basic of orders to your party members, such as attack this enemy or that enemy. But since you can't, as soon as you start a fight, it immediately devolves into a free-for-all melee. This impacts tactics because sometimes bosses will have special moves that you can only prevent by attacking certain objects, but since you can't force party members to focus on a single target, I often found myself just tanking these attacks and praying everyone would survive. This world shall know pain. Second, there is no reward to perfect dodging enemy attacks. If developers are going to incentivize players to wait until the last minute to dodge an enemy attack, then they should be rewarded with an opportunity to inflict big damage. In Tales of Arise, you get a barely noticeable animation and negligible damage. Is that all? Before long, I stopped caring about the mechanic altogether. This feeds into a larger issue where the enemies don't really feel responsive to your attacks. I mean, your characters will call literal meteors onto the battlefield, and for the most part, enemies will react as if you might as well be hitting them with marshmallows. To be fair, a lot of this I chalk up to playing the game on hard. But it often feels like there's more style than substance to the combat system, and that the complexity of the characters isn't matched by reactivity from the enemies. Just look at how enemy models just kind of bounce when you get them into an air combo. It looks kind of jank and isn't something I ever got over. That is not to say that the combat is bad. This is a JRPG after all, not a character action game. The amount of options you have to build your characters through their skill tree and accessories is very rewarding, and learning how to take advantage of boost attacks and enemy breaks provide a rewarding amount of engagement. At the end of the day, even if it's just anime fluff, I have to admit that I never tired of seeing some of the game's more flashier moves. Ah! Lightning reflexes! Tenebrous claw! So cool! And on that note, the game simply looks amazing. We're fairly early into next gen, and it hasn't entirely been clear how anime style games would take advantage of the extra horsepower provided by the new consoles. So far, we've had Scarlet Nexus show us improved cell shading, and Guilty Gear Strive show us improvements to Arc System Works' beautiful in house animation. But frankly, I think Tales of Arise might be the best looking out of all of them. The watercolor design gives it a very unique visual flair that allows for well crafted environments and stunning moments. And what Bandai Namco have managed to achieve with this graphic style is to promote a visual aesthetic that feels next gen without forcing photorealism on anime characters. Were there a category at the Game Awards for Best Looking Game, I think this would definitely be a contender. Level design is fairly straightforward. As with most JRPGs, the environments you encounter are dictated by the story, which in Arise is fairly linear. Typically, that means you will arrive in a new area, seek out an NPC that will help you find the lore that you're tracking, and go to said lore's dungeon for a boss fight. This is obviously a simplification, and that isn't to say that there is no freedom in the level design. In between those steps, you'll have plenty of side quests to keep you busy. These are your typical fair fetch quests and monster slaying. They reward you with experience and money, which is surprisingly hard to come by in the game's economy. More on that later. On hard mode, these side quests may as well be main quests because you'll definitely need to do them to get the experience they provide if you want to have a viable shot at beating the game. And not all the rewards come down to simply money and experience. Sometimes you'll get items that allow you to customize your characters in a lot of interesting ways. And what's great is that these customizations show up in the cutscenes, which is always an appreciated bonus. So far, this review has been pretty positive. Spending your money on a rise will net you a beautiful looking game with exciting combat and plenty of side content. However, there are some negatives that you should be aware of if you're going to buy this game. I played JRPGs for their story, and for about three fourths of its run, Tales of Arise weaves a pretty good yarn. Again, the narrative is carried by the charisma of its characters rather than its plot, which suffers from a poor sense of scale. The idea that your party of six people is somehow liberating an entire planet of slaves without the aid of an army simply never comes across as believable. I mean, it would be like the president and his cabinet fighting a war against an entire nation by themselves. But for the longest time, this doesn't matter, as you'll be more invested in the characters than you will be the world. And then at one very clear moment, this dynamic reverses, and the plot comes to the forefront, bringing with it just a mountain of exposition. At a certain point, there will be so many cutscenes of exposition and world altering revelations that you'll think you're playing a Metal Gear Solid game. You're not the boss, are you? Unfortunately, the writing doesn't approach the quality of that franchise, and some of the biggest plot twists rest on patently ridiculous notions, at least in my opinion. The closest thing I can compare it to is, remember how Naruto used to be about ninjas, and then it somehow kind of became about these weird godlike beings and space trees? It's like that, but perhaps not quite as strong. 
This jumping of the shark makes this last portion of the game an absolute slog to get through and feeds into a major critique I have, which is that the game is simply too long. It took me over 60 hours to beat this game and even accounting for the fact that my playthrough took longer on hard, it feels like a good 15 hours of story content could have been shaven off this game, with most of it coming from the last third. Part of the reason it took me forever to get this review out is that I simply burned out on the last dungeon and took like a 3 month break from the game. And even the side content, which is optional, doesn't present enough variety in my personal opinion to justify 60 plus hours of gameplay. If there were better writing, I'd obviously feel differently. When you're playing a game whose story you love, you never want it to end but I certainly felt after a certain point I could not wait to see the credits roll. As always, your personal mileage may vary and it comes down to how willing you are to suspend your disbelief for the story that Tales of Arise is trying to tell. Which mind you, I don't think is bad, I just think suffers from a lack of focus towards the end. And I hinted at this earlier, but I think the game's economy is really stingy in everything from money and items to experience. Grinding just one level in this game can take an hour. Now of course I have to acknowledge that perhaps my grinding strategies were not optimal, but I have to admit that no matter where I went to grind, it felt like it took longer to get one level than it does in other RPGs. This is exacerbated by the game's healing system, since healing magic has its own distinct pool of points. When grinding, having one bad battle that requires a lot of healing will force you back to a camp to rest, or if a camp isn't nearby, to use a costly item that can restore cure points. And Tales of Arise's healing items are the most expensive I think I've ever seen in a JRPG. Typically stocking up on healing items is an afterthought, but in Tales of Arise you really need to calculate whether you can afford to buy basic potions before a big fight. Why didn't you tell me it was so expensive? There are some methods that open up late in your playthrough that make it easier to game Arise's economy, but for the most part, side quests will be your main method of getting money. But the highest paying side quests are those where you'll have to fight strong bosses, which drains your health, causing you to use healing items forcing you to go to the store. So where does this leave the game overall? Well, I think it leaves it on the cusp of excellence, yet resting squarely in the halls of very good to great JRPGs. Tales of Arise is not a must play, but it is the best big budget RPG of last year. So feel confident that if you buy Tales of Arise, you are buying a good game, but one that you may have trouble finishing towards the end. If you enjoyed the review, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. And even if you didn't, let me know in the comments below how I could have made this a better review for you. Next up, we'll be starting a new series where we compare Tales of Arise vs Scarlet Nexus and debating which one you should choose if you could only pick one. Thanks for the support. This has been Harlan Gaming, out.